it seems like we are going to get 4K 240 Hertz OLEDs next year and also 1080p 480 Hertz OLEDs for a fantastic two milliseconds of persistence, okay? Two pixels of motion blur when moving at 1000 pixels per second. So credit to this video goes to the emulation portal. He has a YouTube channel about emulation. Check him out. And he just shared with me this article from TFT Centro. And when you, when you want to share something with me, don't post the link because then YouTube is going to delete your comment. Just tell me the name of the article and I will check it out. So let's take a look at it. And of course, I'm going to have the link uh, to this article so you can see it yourself. And it's very, very nice because here we have listed the, you know, the display size, the some of the specs that has been uh, have been revealed, some of some of it is rumors. They're very interesting. So basically, we have a bunch of ultra wide monitors. So I'm not very interested in ultra wide because most of them are 1440p. So that's a downgrade. I have 4K right now. I'm not going down to 1440p. Uh, and but there is one ultra wide that is going to be 4K. So 5120 by 2160 ultra wide. Is gonna be 165 hertz, okay? So that's gonna be a monster to <laughs> to get to 140 FPS on that. But yeah, it's there, 45 inch. So that's interesting. But let's talk about what is, in my opinion, the most interesting display coming next year. So this is going to be third quarter of next year. So basically, one year from now we're supposed to get this display. So this display is going to be 31.5 inches, 4K, 240 Hertz at 4K, but also with the option to lower the resolution and get a higher refresh rate. So if you go down to 1080p, you can run it at 480 Hertz. So basically, you don't have to decide between buying a 1080p display for eSports and a 4K display for, you know, third-person games and just story-based games. You can get both in one display. It's going to be HDR and also the display is going to be up to 1300 nits peak brightness. So that's like the G3. And 275 nits full screen. So that's very nice. Very so that's suggested. Okay, this is not a hundred percent confirmed, but you know how this goes. That's that shouldn't be very far from the truth, and it makes a lot of sense. So then they are calling this DFR. Okay, this is this is this stands for dynamic frequency and resolution. So basically, you choose between resolution or refresh rate. And this is not like a this is not a groundbreaking discovery. I discussed this on one of my previous videos. I think when I try to explain how to make a 960 hertz display, uh, you know, from the Blurbusters a website he shared the chief of blurbusters who is you know a genius when it comes to motion clarity he is the man okay so i was trying to explain what he <laughs> in, you know his invention or his proposal technology i was trying to explain how to get 960 hertz displays today okay and you know me trying to understand how that works i basically said we could have easily, for example, let me, let me see if I can explain you what I mean. This is not like rocket science, okay? The way the displays draw the picture is left to right, top to bottom. 
So if you have this LG C1, for example, it's 120 hertz at 4K. At 4K, we have 2160 you know, lines of pixels. So the display is, is drawing left to right, top to bottom. So instead of, instead of 2160, if you do 1080, that's half of the pixels. So if you do half of the pixels, you can double the frequency <laughs> because it would take half of the time to refresh the screen. So I said, why cannot we, why can't we get these TVs, these displays with an option <laughs> to have the vertical resolution and double the refresh rate? <laughs> why not? I said it. It's just an, a no brainer. <laughs> it's obvious. I don't, I don't understand. Maybe I am missing out. Maybe this is like a, a very nice discovery, but I think we should have this right now everywhere. This should be normal. So they are also asking uh, themselves if with this technology, we could also have 1440p, 360 hertz. So basically they are doing the math. They're saying, okay, if you can give me 240 hertz with 2160, what about 1440? So we increase a little bit the resolution and then we decrease a little bit the refresh rate. And that would be a very nice option and it should be possible. No problem. I see absolutely no problem for this to be a possibility. So you can get a display that's 4K 240 Hertz, which is great for motion clarity, but maybe you're trying to play a game that at 4K is just too demanding. But now you have the option of, of, to do 1440p, 360 FPS for a higher quality. And if you really want to go eSports, like, you know, the absolute best of motion clarity, then you do 1080p, 480 Hertz. That would be fantastic. So let me know if you have more details about this DFR uh, technology. Maybe I am missing something, but this, this looks like obvious like why don't we have this right now why this is not even possible <laughs> with just creating a custom resolution of course i am missing something that i don't understand but it just makes sense and i talked about that uh before uh so they also say that qd oled of course is going to respond you know it's good to have competition when it comes to motion clarity we we need more competition and Samsung is also going to have a 4K 240 hertz display. It's going to be 31.5 inch. So it is this the competition between these companies. Sometimes it is like, how do they know? <laughs> like, if you are LG and you are working on a 31.5 inch display, that's WRGB. So it is not the same technology. How does Samsung know <laughs> that they have to respond to that? Or, you know, vice versa. How do they know? How is it possible that they are releasing the same level of improvement all the time? It's like a direct response. <laughs> it's like these companies, they are all working together and they are deciding what they are going to, to release. It's like if one of these companies decide to give you a perfect display, then that doesn't make sense for the business. You know, it's like they are all partners in just making money and they are like, okay, let's just improve this, but don't, don't improve in this one, okay? We're, we're going to do that next year <laughs> because if they give you the perfect display right away, then you're not going to buy anything, see? So, yeah. And of course, I wish still, even with 240 hertz at 4K, I wish this display um, you know, comes with uh, 480 black frame insertion, for, you know, 480 PWM, and it could. If if it can do 480 hertz at 1080p, I bet that it can do black frame insertion. Easy, no, uh, no. I mean, that's obvious. <laughs> It can easily do 50% BFI. I mean, just just give me one black frame in between. So you have 4K, 
240 FPS and one black frame in between those 240 FPS just to double the motion clarity. So in that way, you can get two milliseconds of persistence at 4K. Just lose half the brightness. So you would cut the brightness in half, but if you have 1300 nits peak brightness and you have 275 nits full screen, that's easy. You can easily get a fantastic picture quality. I mean, this would be like a C1. <laughs> so 275 nits, you reduce that in half. That's like 100 and... All right, let's do the math here. You know, again, the university has spoiled me to not do, to not do math uh, by memory. Just use the calculator. So 275 divided by 2. This is how much brightness we can get full screen. How much brightness we can get full screen because black from insertion is going to cut the brightness in half if it's doing 50% um, window size. 275 divided by 2. I'm not doing something right here. 275 divided by 2. Man, I have to get a mouse. 137. That's the C1 right there. That's the LG C1. And then 1300 nits cut in half. That's almost like 650 nits. So that's HDR. That's like almost like an LG C1. 137 nits full screen and 650 nits peak brightness. That's like an LG C1 almost. So this display at 4K could give you 2 milliseconds of persistence using black frame insertion. And if they work in calibrating that, so they should adjust the EOTF tracking. So you can get HDR with perfect accuracy, with HGIG, with that black frame insertion. They can. They can absolutely do that. So basically, you have your 4K 240 hertz. HDR, it looks fantastic. You have an HDIG option. So, you know, HDIG means no tone mapping. The TV follows the EOTF and it's going to hard clip at its maximum peak brightness, which in this case, 1300 nits, it might be like 1500, like the G3. That's like the G3. It's going to hard clip at 1500 nits. And real content for smaller highlights is going to be like 1500 nits. So then when you use black from insertion, because you're cutting your brightness in half, they need to adjust the EOTF tracking, okay? And that is still bright enough to be considered a true HDR display, true blacks. <laughs> so they should do that. So when you turn on black from insertion, you still have a fantastic picture quality. The TV would follow the EOTF and hard clip at 700. That's it. That's like a, almost an LG C1. That would be fantastic. It's totally possible. And they should definitely do it. Why not? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Let me know. So, about the QD OLED. There's no details. There's no... The 4K 240Hz QD OLED, there's no details. Uh, they just say that they are going to answer with the same. So yeah, let me know what you think about this. Um, I think it's very, very, very good news. Um, so the only thing I don't like, of course, is the, the size. 31.5 inch. To go down in size. Yeah. <laughs> I want something bigger. So my next TV, I want it to be bigger. So maybe we can get also uh, 240 hertz TVs. But TVs to watch television... And 30 FPS movies, that doesn't make any sense. So I don't know why would they, you know, do 240 hertz TVs. But I, I definitely want that. Give me that. 4K, give me 55 inch. So I want my next TV to be bigger than 48. Or at least to be the same size. But it, it would need to be a lot better. Definitely 4K, 240 hertz or more. So yeah, let me know. 
Uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to have a link in the description of this video to this uh, article. Um, and yeah, that's very good news. And if you have any other details about this upcoming displays, maybe TVs, uh, let me know. <laughs> let me know. And yeah, so let me show you the um, just the, the website, TFT Centro. They also have a YouTube channel, TFT Centro. They have a YouTube channel. I've seen some of his videos. Actually, it's this guy. Actually, I was a little bit jealous <laughs> because he did a live stream with um, Hardware Unbox um, with um, Tim from H Hardware Unbox. Um, and yeah, I like Hardware Unbox a lot. I would like to do a, <laughs> a live stream with, with Tim. So yeah, he has a YouTube channel. You can check it out and you can check out uh, the, the emulation portal. If you want to figure out how to emulate the Zelda, the upcoming Zelda. I hope he does a tutorial. He knows about that a lot. And I definitely want to play that upcoming Zelda. Day one at 4K, 60 plus FPS at least. <laughs> Hopefully 100, 120 FPS at 4K. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.